Well, um, one more story here. This one has a very historical uh, title, Remember the Alamo. The Alamo is a fort in San Antonio, Texas. It is a historical site, as you most likely know. In 1836, a group of Texans defended the fort. This is the way the official story goes against many Mexican soldiers led, led by General Santa Ana. The Texans were decimated and that led to, according to, again, the official uh, story, to a revolution of sorts, to uh, the coming together of many forces that struck against the Mexican army and defeated it in the end, realizing the independence of Texas. Now, that's not the way Chicanos or those uh, who I, I would describe as Mexican-Americans tell necessarily the story, at least Chicanos, because Chicanos are the more politicized leftist uh, initially, at least um, Mexican-Americans from the 60s. The way they tell the story is that the uh, episode, the historical episode, at El Alamo only triggered um, actually white supremacy, segregation, lynching, um, persecution of uh, Native Americans, because it was the establishment of uh, the white settlers who took over territories that were part of Mexico. Um, so, but Chicanos might not uh, necessarily perhaps put a premium on the idea of those territories being part of Mexico. Rather, they would uh, highlight what I just said, which is the impact that that episode had on the history of, of Texas in terms of unleashing more racism, more uh, segregation, and, and uh, the mistreatment of minorities. <clears throat> but what is, the, what is the relation between, you know, this, uh, this historical um, site and also this saying, right? Because it became a saying, remember El Alamo, remember the Alamo, remember what took place in there, right? How we defeated the, uh, in the end, how we de defeated the Mexicans, but also how um, heroic were those Texans that were defending the fort and in the end ended up giving their lives right for the uh, future of the texan people so what is the relation why why is um why is Cisneros using that title right that's one question one major question for the story well maybe the answer is simpler initially because the um, first uh, person narrator, that is to say, the narrator in here is also a ca character in the story, is telling us that he works at this location, which seems to be like a, uh, a bar or, well, um, a, lo a location where people go have fun, but it's a special uh, type of location because what, what you have on a stage right there is travesties and the narrator is actually according to what he is saying a major travesty um, 
what is it, uh, show. Uh, his stage name is Trist Tristan. Okay, Tristan. And what is the connection to the title? Well, because uh, in the first page of the story, page 63, we find every Thursday night at the travesty, that's the location, that's the name of the, the location, right? Of the place, of the, I'm sorry, of the bar. Uh, behind the Alamo, you, can, you cannot miss it. Behind the Alamo. So next to the fort in San Antonio, Texas, is this, is this place where I put on my show, my spectacle, and I become Tristan. Um, I thought that uh, the the way of uh, uh, the way the way in which Cisneros chooses to narrate in this case is very interesting because you have you have a split right between the person who describes himself as Tristan and then uh, he himself like looking at himself from the outside, but that that we know is impossible, right? Um, it's not like us who, who could be looking at Tristan on a stage. No, this is um, the travesty himself depicting his character. So that's interesting in the sense that he's saying, this is some somebody, a character I have created. And therefore, all my creativity, all my talent uh, went into giving shape uh, to Tistan. And along the way, we'll have more and more attributes of the character, right? Um, so it's not, uh, it doesn't surprise us perhaps as we read that the first uh, person narrator is describing Tristan in such a glowing fashion because Tristan seems to be everything for the narrator as it as it should be it's his creation it it is his life and from that the narrator seems to be gaining a lot and of course if you're a performer performer what you what you aspire to is the recognition of your audience because you have created something magic unique and you become also maybe a different person uh, you seem if you if you are to be you know if one is to be such an ordinary ordinary common person then on a stage one becomes someone else someone who can be admired by people 